LMQ's win. Thanks, Riv. We want to welcome Aiden Zyrene Moon to the desk, as usual now, uh, to help us break down that LMQ win. Now, I want to touch on a couple things real quick at the beginning here. The first being L uh, Complexity got out to a really, really quick early lead. But then I want to touch on LMQ dismantling that lead. So, Zyrene? Yeah, it started off with Complexity getting some nice picks and rotations around the map. It's probably Kez's shot calling there. But then when it came into the late game, at the start, we had all those stats. Ackerman, number one in kills for top laner. Then we have more number one in assists. When the team groups up for LMQ, they win the team fights pretty much just flat out. Every time they grouped up, they got a positive lead. They took objectives off of it. And that's a shot calling of no name coming in and being more objective team fight prowess focused with their mechanics. And... That's di way different than Complexity style, where they're picking off and trying to get a lead, and then they didn't push it. They kind of let up the pressure. There was a dragon where Prawley was out of mana. They didn't set up for it with wards appropriately, and they just had to back off. Yeah, it was really interesting because Complexity, as you mentioned, did do really well early game, and that is just individual skill straight up. They got counter picks there. They got Nidalee. Again, she is the best top lane bully right now, and Rest Rice was winning that lane. In the bot lane, you had the Morgana into Braum counter pick, and you're going to win the two on two when that happens. And this is what happened. These are things that you expect here from Complexity. We also had probably the wild card show up as, a, as an ace instead of a deuce there, so he actually did really well and also got the, the extra kill in the mid lane. And these are things that Complexity can oftentimes rely on and that's good. The problem is, is it felt like Kez didn't know what to do once they were up against some real wave clear. Early game lead, couple thousand gold, and then he suddenly couldn't deal with Gragas split push. He suddenly couldn't deal with doing dragon timers right or when the Tristana siege isn't working anymore. He's out of plans and his turrets are suddenly falling over. And that's a really big problem they need to fix. Well, so how do you fix that? You know, you, you yep. understand what the, the problem is, but you've picked a comp that seemingly has a lot of counters, as you point out. Where Where's the fix? You basically... I mean, it really depends on how you want to do it, right? A team can simply come in and say, we're going to keep playing the same type of strategies, like LMQ does, always aggressive teams, and say, we're going to figure out how to play aggressive and either tower dive you or split push better against this. Alternatively, Kez needs to sort of come up with a new strategy instead, right? You look at other teams, you look at teams better than you, guys like Samsung Blue, you know, et cetera, all these great Korean teams out there and say, okay, this is how these guys are adapting to the problems. These are how these guys fix these issues. And you just, you learn them, right? It's, it's Kez's job to learn, how do I move my team around late game? Letting Gragas push two turrets top lane and recalling late is not a play you're supposed to make. Yeah, it's pressure through map domination and map control. They just completely let up. They had CS leads all across the board in the early game throughout the lanes. They got a solo kill in the mid lane. They didn't leverage these little bits and turn them into a big crow, ball to, crow bar to just pry the game open. They kind of just got very relaxed. And that's very complexity-like. We've seen it. They have these really long games for a reason most of the time because when they do get a lead, they don't know how to close it out. It has to be just ward their jungle, ward it deep, get objectives warded up so you can just keep snowballing your gold. They gave up dragons, like I said, over and over again, and it's just pressure. Just pressure, pressure, pressure. Yeah, it's like they get complacent when they have a lead, and they're willing to let the game move into that. They're like, hey, this this early lead will allow us to take it late, as opposed yeah. to using that early lead to actually close out the game. Yeah, and that's why I think Complexity are actually 0-4 against LMQ now, whereas they're beating some of the other top teams. Is LMQ are a team that will never sit there and be lax? And as you exactly mentioned, I think it's exactly right, Complexity, they're so good individually, they can get the early lead, and they say, well, we'll just snowball. Somehow it'll just happen. But LMQ are so good at finding those cracks and saying, well, there's a kill, there's a pick, there's a dragon, game over. All right, well, let's take a look at our first replay. It's about 27 minutes in. Uh, it's where LMQ kind of makes a big push, gets a 3 for 0, and then takes Baron off of this. Siren, if you could walk me through this. All right, well, what ends up happening here is we see them just come up on the side. Boom, Kez, he's trying to flank. The command protect actually gets stunted by the unbreakable of Braum. So the shockwave actually goes off, but it doesn't go off cooldown because probably went too far to reposition the ball and then didn't actually get his ultimate off. They end up picking up Robert here, and that transitions, I mean, sorry, Bubba Dub, and they get them very low, and that transitions into them getting a Baron pretty easily because of the flank. Kez, he stuck to that battle plan of we're gonna continue to flank them. He didn't adjust mid-strategy, and we see that later on in the game too, where he keeps trying to go for these flanks and not adjusting his battle tactics. 
Yeah, it just felt like Kez was sort of trying to find what was going to work mid-game. He's like building he's like building the plane mid-flight, sort of, because he realizes, oh, shoot, this siege isn't working. Okay, let's try to find a flank that's going to work. But the team's not on the same page yet. Probably's out of range. Kez gets this beautiful flank. He gets a one-on-one -on -one against the Kog'Ma, and that's like, oh my god, Braum's not there, and I found Kog. This is the holy grail for every jungler ever, but probably's not there to shockwave him. And when he shows up, Braum blocks it, right? Like... The right ideas are there, but they're there five minutes late every time for Kez. So is this lack of preparation then on complexity side by saying, hey, presupposing we do get that early lead, here's the steps we're going to need to follow to dismantle this team. It's one of the issues of a newer team is we've heard so many players say scrims just are different than actual LCS matches. Players are so much more risk averse. They're so much more reserved. You just don't get that type of practice and Complexity are one of the new teams in the LCS. They have less of these really close, tense games where no one's making mistakes. And normally, if you're going to play a slow reserved, we'll capitalize on you style. That works in scrims, because people are loose and they'll screw up. And here, you're seeing LMQ be very smart about their movements, very direct when they split push, but they're grouped up otherwise, and suddenly, there's no random picks to be had, and they don't know how to, how to force it in anymore. I kind of don't buy that excuse, though, because LMQ have been in the LCS the same duration of complexity, and they actually have some veterans there with Prawley, who's been on the stage before. Like, I kind of feel like it's just a play style type of thing. LMQ, we talked about it. Vasily has number one AD carry CS. Xiao Wei Xiao, I believe he's number two in 10, and CS at 10. These guys, they get really early leads, then they team fight, and they win the fights off of that. When they get behind, their team fights are a little sloppier, because they don't have that advantage. Complexity, we're in a spot where if they started team fighting and they team fought correctly, I guess team fought correctly, <laughs> then they would be able to come out on top and yep. then just keep snowballing the lead. It's just those little things where it's like, when do we group up? How do we group up? What do we put vision on? And what do we deny them vision of and make a pick? Okay. Well, I'm curious because, too, there's... Uh, there's veterans on both teams. You've got Ackerman sure. on LMQ, right? So we do have that veteran presence. And I guess one of the questions would be then if Prawley is doing what he needs to do as the veteran to, to kind of teach them these lessons, right? Yeah. Earlier in the split and say, hey, this is how we're going to have to perform in competition. Anyway, it's time to get into the last replay here sure. where Kogma actually picks up a quadra kill at the end of the game. So Freak, if you don't mind walking us through the final replay of the game. Sure. So at this point, it's LMQ using their lead properly. Uh, they'd gotten Baron recently, and they're basically just uh, ahead, and so sieging is fairly easy. They push on in, and the thing is, Vasily just feels very confident as long as they're aware of where the Evelyn flank could be coming from. Unfortunately, he doesn't see it come in, but there's just no follow-up. Look how far away Prowley is, right? There's no one to really punish the back line. Everyone just kind of falls over, and at this point, you just have a gold lead, and unless you can stack crowd control on your opposition, and you don't have very much aside from Shockwave, there's just not much to do there. And so it's actually pretty easy to walk those fights in. Um, and, and actually to talk about the point about playing aggressively and, and the two teams being new as well is if your default strategy is aggressive, I think it's easier to play with uh, less synergy than something more relaxed and reserved. I think it's easier to be like, well, we've only been together for six months. But if everyone always knows, oh, always go in and Ackerman split pushes, that's a pretty easy style to continue to play and to understand intuitively compared to a disengaged one where you've got to always be paranoid about where people are. And a big thing about that is you all have to be on the same page as soon as you see a misstep. Because one person will be like, he took two steps forward, that's a misstep. And mm -hmm. other people will be like, no, that's not enough for me. We'll wait for another opportunity. Right. So it becomes a split call. Exactly. All right, well, one final point. With that win, C9, CLG, and TSM all actually punched their tickets into the postseason. So what are those teams now, what are they thinking, right? Because they, they, that's a little bit of weight off their shoulders going into these, these final games of the season is that is we don't really care what happens. Let's, let's experiment or let's take the wins and build momentum. Oh, it's absolutely not a time to be lax right now because these guys are still... They've all got five to six games left in the season, and they're two and a half games or three and a half games behind LMQ. And a first round bye is really important because all the playoff teams are super good. And we're seeing that from Curse, Dignitas, and the guys who are locked in the playoffs. So skipping quarterfinal, huge deal. Yeah, and... I don't, can't speak for their mentality, but you definitely can't get relaxed here. You have to be forward-looking, forward-thinking. Playoffs, anything can happen. We could have an upset. We could have one of the bottom teams become the number one team. There's a lot that can happen in a bracket. So when you come into this, you just research the teams, you continue doing what you're doing if you're LMQ, and you just try to bring it home. Definitely scrambling for that second seed, at least for that first round bye, is very important for these teams. Well, thank you guys so much for all the input, as mm -hmm. always. We've got to take a quick broadcast or cool down. When we come back, we'll jump into the action with TSM versus Evil Geniuses. Stay tuned.